Hey y'all, welcome to Peyton Energetics. I'm Peyton. And today we are talking about soul contracts. This may be one of those words that you have heard in the course of your spiritual education. You have probably seen it floating around on social media, but I find that it's one of those concepts that a lot of people don't really understand what soul contracts are or why they're so important. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at what soul contracts are, why they're important, especially for star seeds, and how you can work with your soul contracts. When I first heard the term soul contracts, it was when I was going through my mediumship training many years ago, and I learned how to look at a client's soul contracts, go into the Akashic Records, cancel contracts, amend them, renegotiate them, terminate any ones that weren't serving my clients anymore. And I thought at the time that it was kind of a cool concept. It was kind of a novelty. I thought it was a nice thing to know how to do, but I didn't really appreciate how truly important our soul contracts are. But as I have started working more and more with the Pleiadians lately, the Pleiadians have been talking about how our soul contracts govern almost everything that happens to us in our daily life. So I have a renewed appreciation for soul contracts and want to help other lightworkers and star seeds understand and work with their own soul contracts. This is a huge topic, so we're just going to jump right in. So what is a soul contract? First of all, when we hear the words contract, as humans, what do we do? Our mind goes to a human contract. And when we think of a contract in the human sense, a lot of times what we think of is something that is binding and written in stone that traps us or locks us in for a long period of time that we don't have any flexibility in, that we can't get out of if it's not working for us. So our human mind, when we hear the word contract, tends to go to the human definition of contract. So sometimes it's better to think of our soul contracts as soul agreements because our soul contracts are really much different than the word contract might lead you to believe. So I will probably jump back and forth between using the word soul contract and soul agreement, but both those terms mean pretty much the same thing. So unlike an earth contract, when we talk about a soul contract or a soul agreement, what we are talking about is an informal agreement or an intention to share a particular experience with another being, whether that is a human being or a being in spirit, maybe a spirit guide, or a collective agreement, an agreement that we have with a group of people, whether that is the people that we work with, the people in our community, or even all the other people that are sharing this human experience with us. We have collective and individual soul agreements for almost everything. So when do we make our soul contracts or our soul agreements? When are they put in place? How does that work? Well, this can happen in a couple of different ways. One of the main ways that we create our soul agreements is before we incarnate into these human bodies. So many of our soul agreements, both individual and collective, are made before birth. So this includes things like choosing our parents, deciding what family we are going to be born into, deciding what country we are going to be born into. All of these are examples of collective soul agreements. These are agreements that were made before we incarnated. So many of our soul contracts and soul agreements are pre-birth agreements. All of our soul agreements are made at higher levels of consciousness. So for the most part, when we are talking about our soul contracts, we're talking about things that we didn't necessarily, from a conscious point of view in our human body, um, know that we were creating. So soul contracts are created from higher levels of consciousness. And very often that is from the level of our higher self before we incarnate into these earth bodies. But another way that we create soul agreements is during our daily life. 
We are constantly creating new agreements and ending agreements as we go about just our everyday life. But with the agreements that we make during our incarnation, so as we are just going about our daily business, these are made at an unconscious or subconscious level. So you don't necessarily know, and most of us aren't aware, when we are creating a soul agreement and when we are putting these agreements in place. So that is one of the reasons why, for the most part, most people aren't aware of what their soul contracts or soul agreements actually are. And as the Pleiadians have been telling us, we have soul agreements for almost everything. So our soul agreements can be either individual, which is a one-on-one -on -one agreement where we have an agreement with another point of consciousness. Again, that can be with a, another human being, or it can be with a being that is still in spirit form. An agreement between two particular points of consciousness. And an example of our individual soul contracts are, as you would imagine, agreements between us and one other being to share a particular experience. So very often this can be the agreement that we have with our mother or our father or our spouse or our partner. So our individual agreements are one-on-one -on -one agreements with another point of consciousness. And again, we also have collective agreements that are with a broader group of beings. So some examples of our collective agreements are we all agreed to be born onto planet Earth and to share this experience together. And we all agreed that the sky would be blue. That is generally the human experience that we all collectively agree on or that a dog is a dog and a tree is a tree. What these are, are agreements that as humans, we will translate the energy that we know as a dog or a tree, as a dog or a tree. This is a collective agreement that we have, that we will translate particular forms of energy in a uniform way. Because if one person was translating the energy as a dog, the other person was translating that same energy as a car, things would get pretty confusing pretty fast. So our collective agreements help us have a shared common ground. So our collective agreements govern everything in our experience, how we will perceive the world around us, the rules that we will operate by, and basically they help give order and structure to all of us sharing this experience together. So a couple things to know about soul agreements or soul contracts are, first of all, we have them for almost everything. So again, every person that we interact with, everyone that is important or even just a bit player in our life, we have an agreement with. So our agreements are governing and controlling our entire human experience, because again, they're just agreements to share a particular experience or to perceive energy in a common way. So the first thing you want to remember about soul agreements is we have them for everything. The second thing you want to know about soul contracts is unlike earth contracts, our soul contracts are generally changeable. So unlike an earth contract that binds you, you can't just walk away if you get bored, our soul contracts can generally be changed. Now, not all soul contracts can be changed. And some soul contracts, particularly as we get to higher and higher levels of them, might require you to have some help from someone else like an intuitive in order to change them. But many of our agreements are changeable. So that is something that is really important to remember because again, as humans, we tend to think that our soul contracts are written in stone and that's not at all the case. So a great way to look at your soul contracts and your soul agreements is as an informal agreement to share a particular experience. But the thing is, these contracts and these agreements will govern and they will control unless you change them. So that's why our contracts are so important is because we can have agreements that are still open, still in force, that don't serve us anymore. But for the most part, knowing that you can change them 
puts you back in the driver's seat. It gives you your creative power back. So remember, for the most part, your soul contracts can be changed if they aren't serving you anymore. Now, something else to know about soul contracts, and again, this is another one of those differences from what we think of as an earth contract, is that you can change your soul contract unilaterally. And what that means is you can change it by yourself, even if the other side doesn't agree. Now, with earth contracts, as you know, for the most part, both parties have to agree to change an earth contract. That's kind of how contracts work here on earth. But from a soul contract perspective, you can make another decision. You can use your free will to decide that a particular agreement isn't serving you, and you can release the other party or parties from it. So that is also very important to know because when something is not serving you anymore, even if the other party wants to hold you to that agreement, you can cancel it. You can terminate it. You can walk away. So that's very important to know about your soul contracts because again, you wouldn't necessarily expect that when you hear the word contract. And finally, the last thing that you wanna remember about your soul contracts is that they will continue to bind you unless you close them out. Now, this is where we get into the point about why our soul contracts are so important. And one of the reasons the Pleiadians have been revisiting the issue of soul contracts with us and encouraging us to give them more attention is because a lot of us have soul contracts that are open that don't serve us anymore. So this gets us into the topic of which soul contracts do we want to keep and which ones need to be maybe closed out or amended? Well, our soul contracts can play out in several different ways. We can have soul contracts that are serving us and beneficial to us for our entire life experience. So one example that comes to mind is our spirit guides. So before we incarnate into these human bodies, we choose three of our most trusted advisors in the spirit realm to be our spirit guides during this incarnation. And we ask these beings to teach us, guide us, and protect us from the time we are born until the time we transition out of these earth bodies. And this is one of those examples of soul contracts that we might not be aware of consciously, unless you're on your spiritual path, in which case you are well aware of your spirit guides. But this is one of those agreements that is probably one you want to keep in place. So this is one of those examples of an open-ended soul contract because it extends for your entire life, but the whole time it is beneficial to you. So that would be one example of a soul contract that is working for you. So that would be one that we generally want to leave in place. But now the reason why the Pleiadians are talking to us about soul contracts lately is because we have a lot of agreements that are not beneficial to us. Now, how does this happen? How would we put a contract in place that doesn't serve us? Well, one way that this can show up, especially for light workers and star seeds, is that when we are preparing for this incarnation, so before we're born, we want to set up certain challenges in our life. We want to set ourselves up to learn certain lessons. And one of the ways that lightworkers and star seeds love to do this is we choose to incarnate into very challenging families or to have very difficult relationships. That's another way that I see in so many of my clients that they set up contracts to have very challenging romantic relationships. So relationships are one of those great areas that we oftentimes have soul contracts that might serve us for a portion of our journey, but are not beneficial to us over the long haul. So say for example, before you incarnated, you were a typical star seed or light worker, and you chose to have a very challenging family life. And of course, so many star seeds and light workers had very, very challenging childhoods very difficult relationships with their family, dysfunctional families are very common in the awakened community. And this is often something that we chose very deliberately before we incarnated. And the reason for that is that we wanted to learn and understand the suffering and challenges 
that the average human goes through. And what better way to experience that than to be born into a very difficult, challenging family? Well, what happens is that sounds great when we are in the love and light of source, when we are in our full consciousness, but once we incarnate and have lived through a few decades of very challenging relationships, we've learned that lesson. We understand. And once we go through our awakening process, we start to do our healing work, our integration work. We've learned that lesson. It doesn't serve us anymore to continue to have conflict, drama with particular individuals in our life. So this would be one example of a soul contract that is very, very common for light workers and star seeds is to have challenging relationships. But after our awakening, we don't need that lesson anymore. But as long as that contract is in place, guess what? We continue to manifest that same troubling, difficult, toxic relationship. Because from the point of view of our contract, when we were in source before we incarnated, we and that difficult person thought it would be just an absolute blast to come into this incarnation and make each other's lives miserable. And while that all sounds well and good when you are in the love and light of source, once we get here into our human form, it's not that fun. One of the reasons why it's so important for us to start looking back at our soul contracts is so we can start closing out some of these agreements that we don't need anymore. So some of the examples, again, for star seeds, a great place to look at your soul contracts is in those difficult relationships whether that is challenging family relationships, difficulties in romantic relationships is another hotspot for most light workers and star seeds. And this is a great place to look for agreements that might not be serving you anymore. So these are some of the agreements that we want to examine and start to close out. And again, remember your soul contracts are unilateral. You can cancel them even if the other party doesn't agree. Another reason that soul contracts are so important, especially for star seeds, is because star seeds are very old souls. As you know, as a star seed, you have lived in every star system, you have been part of every star race, you have played in the light, you have played in the dark, you have been everywhere and done everything. So, star seeds in particular can be prone to bringing into this lifetime agreements from other lifetimes. So this may be other lifetimes where you worked very collaboratively with certain star races. Maybe you worked very collaboratively with the grays and gave them certain access to you and never closed out those old agreements before coming into this lifetime. So what can happen with star seeds is oftentimes we have left open old soul agreements from other incarnations that aren't really relevant or appropriate in this lifetime. And so what can happen is that can cause us trouble in this lifetime. That's one of the reasons that can contribute to abduction experiences where a particular individual comes in, they have an open soul agreement where they gave a particular race, maybe the grays, for example, access to them, let them, you know, work with them, take genetic samples from them, and you never closed out that agreement. So you come into this incarnation and that soul agreement is still active. That can be one of the contributing factors to abduction experiences is that you have a soul agreement that hasn't been closed out, that is not relevant or helpful in this lifetime. So that's one of those things where the other being thinks that you have given your valid consent and they are just proceeding under what they think is the agreement that you two have. But that agreement doesn't serve you in this lifetime the way it did in the lifetime you put it in place. So things like that, especially for star seeds, because we are such old souls, we have lived in every system, had every experience, good and bad, and we are prone to dragging in some old contracts 
that just never got closed out. And the, that can cause trouble in this lifetime. So that is another one of those reasons, especially for star seeds, why it's so important to understand our soul contracts and close out any that aren't helpful to us in this incarnation. Now, one of the other reasons that the guides have been talking more about soul contracts and bringing our attention back to them, because let's be honest, most of us have not given a lot of thought to our soul contracts. And let me know in the comments below, have you done any work on your soul contracts? If so, what kind of work do you do? And what are your favorite tools to work on your soul contracts? So let me know that in the comments. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button and the like button if you haven't done that yet. So one of the reasons that we are kind of seeing a renaissance in the focus that we are giving on soul contracts is that the Pleiadians are saying it is time for us to start closing out some of the collective soul agreements that we still all have open, most of us still have these in place that don't serve us anymore. Because when we agree to incarnate into this earth game, as you know, we agreed to certain limitations and restrictions on our consciousness. We agreed to go from source energy and full consciousness to a very limited, dense experience of the third dimension. And so to do that, we essentially agreed to put on blinders, to have our memories and our full multidimensional abilities closed off from us. So a lot of the abilities that we have when we are in our fully embodied spiritual form, we agreed to turn those off for a while, to have some amnesia so that we could play this very limited restrictive earth game. But guess what? That doesn't serve us anymore. Now that we are on the threshold of moving into fifth dimension fully and officially, those old restrictions on our consciousness aren't beneficial to us anymore. They are restrictions and burdens that we just don't need. We have learned our lessons, we have done our growing and our inner work, and it doesn't serve us anymore to limit or restrict our consciousness. So one of the things that the guides have been encouraging us as lightworkers and starseeds to revisit with our soul contracts is any collective contracts we have that are based on the enslavement that we know was part of our 3D incarnation here. We agreed to come into a manipulated matrix game and it sounded like great fun when we were in source. Again, our perspective is very different when we are in our fully conscious form. We agreed to play this very challenging game, but it's time for the game to end. But what happens is many of us still have these old enslavement contracts in place, even though they expired in 2012. So one thing that the guides are encouraging us to do is start closing out our enslavement contracts. Start closing out any contracts that limit or restrict our consciousness. Start closing out any contracts that don't serve us or benefit us anymore. And as we do that, we start to free ourselves from the 3D matrix and make it possible for us to complete our ascension to the fifth dimension. So this is one of those reasons why I wanted to talk to y'all about soul contracts, because the guides are telling us how vitally important it is right now for us to start closing out these old contracts. Because again, contracts are changeable for the most part, but they do bind you as long as they are in place. Because the universe is assuming that as long as you are leaving it in place, that is your current intention. So one thing we want to start doing as light workers and star seeds is canceling out our enslavement contracts, terminating them, terminating anything that limits or restricts our consciousness, because it's not necessary anymore. It's time to move beyond that. It's time for us to move back into full consciousness. But if we are still devoting energy and anytime we have a soul contract in place, it is affecting our frequency. And in the case of enslavement contracts or contracts that allow our consciousness to be restricted, what it's doing is lowering our frequency, 
lowering our vibration. And that's the opposite of what we want as light workers and star seeds. So one of the reasons it's so important to be aware of your soul contracts and start to close them out is to get yourself out from under the unnecessary weight of some of these agreements that don't serve you anymore. So how do you work with your soul contracts? Well, the best way to do it, if you want to get a really deep cleaning of your soul contracts, make sure they are completely closed out, that they are not drawing any more energy, is of course to work with a professional intuitive, someone who can go in and if I'm working with a client, what I would generally do is look at their Akashic records, see which contracts are still open that aren't serving them, start to close those out, start to amend any contracts that need to be just updated and to terminate any contracts that don't serve you, that are restricting your consciousness, restricting your abilities. Very often as light workers and star seeds, we put restrictions on our multidimensional abilities in place. And some of us did this, and this is very common actually as children, because our ability to see clairvoyantly or to be telepathic freaked out the people in our life or it freaked out us. And so we asked to have our abilities shut down. But now that we are awake and wanting to reconnect with our multidimensional abilities, if we still have those old contracts in place, it makes it really difficult. So that is another one of those agreements that light workers and star seeds often have that we want to get rid of. We want to clean that up so that you can fully access all of your multidimensional abilities. So the best way to work with your soul contracts to get a really deep clearing is of course to work with a professional intuitive. But when I have been working with the Pleiadians, I've been asking them what can the average person do if they don't have access to an intuitive, don't have the money for one right now, if they want to do a little bit of this themselves. And so what the Pleiadians have recommended, and I thought that this was such a great idea, they said to start working with your intention. Because as we talked about earlier, a soul contract is just an informal agreement or an intention to have a particular experience. So how do you change that? You change your intention. So if you are someone who wants to start working at least a little bit with your soul contracts, and this will not get you the same result as a professional energy session, but it is a way for you to start smoothing out some of your less helpful soul contracts. And that is to just do simple affirmations, the setting of your intention. Because again, you are stating to the universe your current intention. And so if you want to do a little bit of work on your soul contracts yourself, before you start to work with an intuitive, just starting to work with your intention and your affirmations can be a great way to get started. And again, it won't give you a full clearing. It won't clear those um, really persistent high level contracts. You may need some extra help with that but it will get you started at least. And so right now I just wanted to have something that all star seeds and light workers could take advantage of to get you started in working with your soul contracts. Because again, a lot of us didn't really appreciate how incredibly important our agreements are for everything that happens to us. So let me know in the comments what you think or what your technique is for working with soul contracts. I love hearing what tools and processes work for y'all. And the more we can share this, the more we can start helping all star seeds clear up some of these really collective contracts that don't serve any of us anymore. So I hope this helps you and I'll see you soon. Bye.